Hello everyone and welcome to another video for SPFBO9, the self-published fantasy blog off. And we are going to find out today which book will join the previous three semi-finalists, A Gamble of Gods, Bob the Wizard, and Murder at Spindle Manor. But first, I am going to go over five great reads that I enjoyed in the process of going through my 30 books that I am whittling down to five semi-finalists, which I will then whittle down further to one finalist, which will compete against the other nine finalists for SPFBO 9. And so, let us begin with The Fear of Mancroi. Uh, and by the way, I apologize for my uh, sinuses. I have a bit of a cold right now, uh, but SPFBO must go on, especially with deadlines looming. So here we are, and it might even help me a little bit to pronounce Mancroi. So, I don't know, but you be the judge. But anyway, this is uh, uh, one of the books that I enjoyed immensely. One of the five that will not be a semi-finalist, but was a great read, and I know there's a lot of people out there who will enjoy this book. It's by Brian Asher, and this is Fantasy with Vampires, featuring Davian, the protagonist who is the last of the Way Wards, and must hide among the very entities in the royal vampiric court that slew his compatriots. Now, there is a mysterious vampire slaying swordsman who arrives in the midst of this, changing everything as he seeks the last of the way wards. This is a fast-paced and relatively short read if you're looking for a good adrenaline boost. The next book that I want to talk about is A Searing Faith, book one of The Heart Pyre by Audrey Martin. Now, the catalyst for this story happens when Rena, the teenage protagonist, becomes the sole survivor of a catastrophic fire that destroys her home. And it's not the only tragic fire that occurs in the kingdom of Kal Hema. Showing determination as she works through her trauma, she joins a ragtag group determined to uncover the truth. Now, this is a YA read that deals very well with loss and trauma. The next book I am going to talk about here is A Lady in Crystal by Toby Bennett. In the city of Niskar, the burial ground of a dead god, reality and dreams blend. And the latter is just as likely to kill you as the former since stealing dreams means stealing souls. Having failed to kill a prominent target, the assassin Akna becomes spiritually and emotionally crippled and is expelled from his order. Survival means discovering how his fate is bound to the Lady in Crystal. This is one of the most bold and atmospheric reads that I have encountered among the 30 books. I absolutely adored the, the uh, how... Uh, Toby Bennett really went for it with the prose. Uh, it is very imaginative. Uh, I enjoyed engaging with the prose, especially as Toby Bennett really goes for it. There were some issues with commas and uh, little um, typo type things, like uh, the difference between loose with two O's and lose with one, or maybe words like seep versus steep. So there were little issues here and there, but I think with a, uh, a really good uh, proofreading, uh, this could be a really amazing read, and I encourage you, especially if that sort of thing doesn't bother you too much, to check out A Lady in Crystal for whatever reason. It has no reviews or ratings in Goodreads at the moment, and I just think that's a terrible shame because it is most worthy of uh, in engaging with. So next we have Curse Breaker Enchanted by Melinda. Uh, now, I'm not going to say the last name probably right, uh, but I'm guessing Kuzera. It's K-U-C-S-E-R-A. Kuzera is how I'm going to say it. I apologize, Belinda, if I mispronounce that. But anyway, this is a Curse Breaker Enchanted it is epic fantasy with extensive world building in a place hostile to magic. The main character, Sarn, is not keen to use his power, which he has little control over. To save his home and, importantly, his son, he must use his magic to survive 
and, under, and uncover the heart of a conspiracy. This features, uh, this, this particular story, Curse Breaker, uh, features a really lovely, strong father-son relationship. And that is one thing that I did enjoy about it. And uh, finally, among the five books that I enjoyed but are not going on to be semi-finalists, there is Embers, which is book one of the Ascension Saga by Brock Mays. This is a highly imaginative epic fantasy featuring a diverse group of beings and magic. The protagonist wakes up amidst a conflagration with no memory whatsoever and only a name carved on his arm, Alexander. Captured by the winged Sangorans and seen as a weapon for his fire-wielding power, he becomes embroiled in war. Through the help of the warrior Shantha, he fights to survive, while another prisoner, Mara, may just hold the key to his past. And now, without further ado, we have the semi-finalist, which is Shadows That Bind Us, book one of the Palisade Trilogy by Amber L. Werner, or if it's the German pronunciation, Werner. Uh, I'm going with Werner, though, uh, and I hope that's right. Now, this is YA fantasy that will appeal to a broad audience. Now, I, I'm calling it YA, and I'm not the only one, uh, not just because of the age of the protagonist and the content, but because of the prose. The writing is very polished. It is competent and accessible. And the three POV characters, each with their personal struggles, are fleshed out very well. One of the things that I personally appreciated the most was how Werner delves into the price of magic in a very unique and compelling way. Now, the three main POV characters are Kada, Connell, and Lark. Of royal stock, Kada determines to fight her plotting stepbrother through magic and alliance with beasts. And after a wolf rescues him, Connell determines to save his sister Lark from a dire conspiracy, but he must decide whom he can trust on the way. And with her dreams of being a healer, Lark is eager to learn the wisdom of the Palisade mages who keep their kingdom from harm at a great price. But Lark becomes embroiled in a trap and must somehow outwit her captors. In the meantime, the great evil that threatens the kingdom from the outside is awakening. So I enjoyed my time with all of these very much. I hope that some of you will check them out. And next video will be my last for my batch of 30. I will be putting forward one more semifinalist. And in that same video, I will go over the five semifinalists and decide on which one is going to be my finalist. So stay tuned for that one. Until next time.